Hello, Mary, me, everybody. It's Michelle Bree Delaney, and of course, today is Saturday, and it's a very, very cool day today. Here in most of the United States, except for the southernmost areas of Florida and SoCal, it is going to be pretty bad, pretty cold. Um, in fact, we've warned you about that, and we'll continue to remind you please bundle up and dress warmly. As we, of course, will be experiencing colder temperatures here in the Northeast by Tuesday. Expected a high of zero and a low of minus eight. Uh, so please do dress warmly. And if you if you happen to know anybody who's homeless, uh, please either give them a place to sleep or provide some assistance. Uh, maybe some blankets or if you have an old heater that works, some way that they can provide some warmth themselves. Today we're going to be talking about a couple different things, aren't we, Lou? Yeah, we're going to talk about the teeth. The te- we did one. I know that, but I wanted to, first of all, explain that I'm very proud that Michelle did take that initiative and pull the bull by the horns. Yeah, well, I'm about to lose the horn. <laughs> no, really. Michelle's tooth is already broken anyway. It's going to come out because it turns out that there's a small infection in the base of the tooth near the root on the right side. So this got to come out because otherwise the problem can get a lot worse. It doesn't really hurt, but that's not the point. Exactly. It's not the point. It's not the point if it hurts or not. It's just con- it's just precautionary measure. Um, like you said, you don't want to be like Nefertiti, um, the, one of the few and only queen that we know of Egypt the only female pharaoh in history um, will kill her in the end with a lowly situation. The same one I got. The exact same problem Michelle has. And you don't want to end up getting an abscess that could potentially lay you up in bed. Now, even though the, 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 the pharaohs had the best medical care they could get at the time, um, they didn't have x-rays and they didn't have uh, advanced antibiotics. But they certainly did have medical care. But the doctors did all they could to make her um, more comfortable. But unfortunately, it didn't help. She succumbed from a variety of things, including a horse infection has spread from the one spot near the root, almost in the same place Michelle has, but hers is on the other lobe of the double-rooted tooth. Right, hers was on the left side, and mine's on the right. Right, so um, not at all a very comfortable thought to realize that if that gets out of control, it could basically kill you. Um, so I am proud of Michelle. The fact is that she has uh, agreed to to to, care, to take care of the problem and ameliorate it before it became a problem, as was my intention even in September. Exactly. Now, today we're going to be talking about the multiverses. Now, I, I, me and Michelle have watched a few shows on multiverses. This is something that is actually originally was a science fiction um, topic that um, the um, quantum mechanics have discovered seems to really make sense. It actually works. It does work. Basically, here's how it goes. Uh, there is evidence to indicate that indeed there are multiverses. And the problem is, is we can't directly see these multiverses. Um, in fact, <clears throat> excuse me, it's okay. Uh, a couple of days ago, there was actually, uh, I saw an article on um, Russian television's website about this. And then we watched a little bit of a show last night on multiverses. And what it's about, it explains how some scientists believe in a couple of different things, including the bubble theory, that each universe is like a big bubble in a giant river. Yes, and that's exactly what Simon Hawk talked about in The Reluctant Sorcerer. It was exactly the same thing, was that time... Um, is is actually considered part of space time, but he kept a symbol from it, which was as this: 
Think of every universe as a drop of water in an infinitely huge sea. Now, if you were to put, pick up one individual drop, it'd be one universe. But they're so close together that you don't see the individual drops of the universes when you look at the whole. But you really, you just see one. But if you're inside that one universe, you don't know of the other universes directly, so you have to basically kind of, you have no way of crossing from one universe to the other. However, another scientist, uh, I forgot what her name was, uh, uh, Rossini Houghton or something, said that there's something called crosstalk. Crosstalk? Yeah, in fact, that's exactly what in the... Um, Electron sorcerer did by mistake is to cross from one universe to the other. Um, I don't want to spoil the story for the people who never read Simon Hawk, Simon Hawk's book, but if you get a chance to read it, it's pretty cool. Um, we're talking here about something that could be potentially a very key piece to time travel. Ooh, because time travel says. There's a paradox, which is, we always talk about go back to kill your grandmother, grandfather. I don't like to think of something so violent if I can. How about something a little bit less violent? How about to go back in time and date your grandmother or grandfather when they were young? Oh, that would really boggle the mind. It's even more head-banging screwy than trying to think of killing your grandfather. Well, according to Albert Einstein, he says you can't do it. But other scientists say, yeah, you can. However, Albert Einstein says, even though you can't go back in time and kill all your relatives, you could certainly potentially interfere with another dimension and do that to another, i.e. Michelle's grandparents. And the other Michelle would either be changed in another way once She's born. Yes. Um, but here's the thing I wanted to get to. You're, you could be in a universe where there is magic of all kinds. High-powered magic. Yeah. Um, also, we could go back and to another universe where the they still haven't really gone beyond the Victorian era concepts um, yet. And they haven't even gotten into the Edwardian concepts. Yeah. Um, and that brings up an interesting question. Um, we were talking about this last night. Actually, we were talking about this before last night. We were talking about it for like several, several weeks now off camera. Is what if Mother and Father God decided, or if you asked to go back to the Victorian era... Would you be placed in the Victorian era on this dimension, or would you be placed in the Victorian era in another dimension? Hmm, that's a good question. That's a very, very important question because we're talking about if there's a multiple, if there's a multiverse, okay, and if Mother God is only potent and only essence and they can go anywhere in time and they can go backwards, forwards in time and our life charts allow it. Do they? Um, I don't really remember if they do or not exactly. I think that you need a special dispensation from Mother or Father God to do it, but possibly. Or maybe they might put you in a different dimension. But they only control one dimension. This one. Oh, 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 and the other side. So, okay, so you're saying is that they can control the dimension of the other side, which is really close to this dimension. Yes. And they control this dimension. Yeah, indirectly, because Lucifer also is in charge of this dimension. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for a moment. I, I, I don't want to go through all the uh, levels of complexity. I think I'm, I think we're already kind of losing our audience already here. Um, okay, so basically, let's just keep cut, cut it short. When we go back home, yeah, and if we said to come back again, yeah, but we asked Mother and Father God, could you put us in a different time period? 
We don't want to go in the future. We want to be in the past. Or past-like environments. Mm -hmm. Then they probably might say, well, we'll have to put you in another dimensional plane, where which is similar to the environment you left, but not the same plane. Because I can't... Because this technically is a time only travels forward, except for very limited occasions where they can go backwards. Well, if you remember something I saw back when I was actively going to Catholic Church, you know that I saw myself in the pew. Yes, you did. And you were brown-haired at the time. But I'm the same age as now. Well, you, now you are. But back then, you were only in your 20s. And I had brown hair then, right. But you got white hair now. I got white platinum blonde now, right? Okay, so which means that could that Michelle have come from another dimensional plane to interact with you? <sighs> I really wish I had got a chance to talk to her. I don't even know if her name was Michelle. Well, it possibly could have been. It may not have been. We didn't get a chance to really talk to her. We just... You just shook her hand, and that was it. Yeah. Um, so the point is, is that um, we have um, just opened up a really sticky wicket here. Because if you think about what we're talking about, what we're saying is, is somebody, if I was to go back in my past, somehow, and I was to meet myself at the Catholic Mass. The person I'd be meeting would not be expecting a person with brownish white hair. They'd be expecting a person with white hair. Exactly. But that person had brownish red hair. Right, this person had brownish red hair because in her dimension she did not have it bleached. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so which means that she probably may have been from another dimension. Possibly. Okay, um... Uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Okay, so the point is, is that um, that person, clearly, I remember she looked really, really, really sad. I never saw a woman look so unhappy. Because in her dimension, her life stunk. Her life stunk. Why? I don't know. I just did. Okay, so her life stunk. Um, and then she came back to me in the church. She didn't say anything except peace be with you. But the fact was that I picked up, not so much from the words, but from the facial expression on her face was, please don't fuck it up. That's what I got the impression was. It's almost like she was warning me without saying a thing. Please don't fuck it up. Don't be like me. Okay, so you didn't. No, I didn't. Because that was enough to tell me that either A, I was going to live a long time but have a really messed up life. Or I was going to... And I could see in her heart that she basically never, ever dared... Think outside the box. And that's exactly what I decided to do that. Start thinking outside the box. Because I started to ask myself the questions I asked myself as a child. What if? What if there really was a guardian of forever? For example, like we see in Star Trek. What if she went back, not to not to, to kill Edith Keeler, but not to, not to fall in love with Edith Keeler, but to work with Edith Keeler to improve Edith Keeler's plans for the socialist movement. Yeah, but look how much trouble got Dr. McCoy. And yeah, exactly. But yet, according to Einstein, you can't go back and mess up your history. But you can go back and mess up someone else's history. It was just not your history because you made you mess up your history. Everything changes. Everything changes. So, okay. 
So she realized that she couldn't go back and mess up her history because her time travel ability, for whatever reason, could not allow would not allow it. Maybe they couldn't create the exact way for her to go back. And then, because if she went back in time to her own self, well, met up with herself, and she told the person without saying a word, "Don't fuck it up." then obviously there's no reason for her to go back in the first place because that Michelle would not have fucked it up. Exactly. So, in order to avoid a time paradox, they had to go back, or she ended up going back to my time when I was about 23 years old. And without really saying much, because I know who it was, I could recognize it was me. And she looked at me with such sadness, and then and, and a message kind of just jumped across her synapses. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Why? What do you mean by that? I didn't even need to ask that question. I could see from her age and the lines in her face and the sadness in her eyes. I didn't even have to guess what she meant by don't fuck it up. I knew exactly what she meant. It's because it's you. But those are you from another dimension. Exactly. Okay. So, you obviously decided not to fuck it up, so to speak. Right. Um, but, you know, what? this another thing, too, that worries me has, besides time travel, I really would like to meet her again because I really would like to ask you some more questions. Could you please tell me what you meant? Um, well, how did my future, how did my past change... Versus your past. How did my future? How is my future different than your past? Well, let me ask you this question, because I'm sure some of the more advanced studiers of our videos are probably going to be shaking their heads, going, "Huh?" Um, if you were to go back, if you could travel back in time, even if it's not this dimension, if you could travel back to another dimension and say to that Michelle. Um, you're going to do great things if you choose to. The problem with the parallel universe is, is, is there's an infinite number of possibilities and we don't know if that young Michelle may have the same opportunities for herself. Okay? So... For example, maybe that young Michelle may never have the ability to be a Snow Queen, for example. If I come back as a Snow Queen to that young Michelle, and I say, look where you could be. And then obviously, without looking ahead of time into the fact is, in that Pearl universe, there may not be magic at all. Magic may not even exist, not even as a concept. Right, then in case you wasted your time. Then I wasted my time. On the other hand... If I was to go back in the history, and that Michelle was a, 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 an evil entity, and she was into dark stuff, you know, and she was, you know, she was doing necromancy and, and other kinds of nasty diabolical arts, and I went back to her and said, you can be a snow queen. She might take advantage and become like Ingrid and once upon a time. Using the power of your knowledge, not to expand people's life, but to hurt them. Exactly. Okay, so that would be really kind of bad juju for you, because wouldn't it go? Wouldn't that be a mark on your on your record? Um, I think mother and father God are pretty understanding. If you make a mistake, I mean, but if you were to do it deliberately, knowing full well the consequences. They are going to hold you accountable to that, but mistakes do happen, and so they probably would say, okay, you didn't know the background of this person. You just basically went back to talk to yourself, and you didn't know that she was involved with evil and sorcery, dark magic, necromancy, and, and you know, causing violence to animals and hurting people. I mean, in that case, you probably go, well, okay, you need to do better research next time you plan to go back and talk to another person another Michelle from another dimension. Well, apparently this person did make a conscious decision and thought very hard of which Michelle she wanted to go back and see. So she came back and saw me because she knew 
that where she was, she was getting nowhere except older. Yep. She was miserable. I could see it in her eyes. It was, I don't, I really don't want you to become like me. I, I, I remember the, I remember the visual image from your, from your mind. It's still there. I know. You never forgot that moment. And it still haunts you. It still haunts me. Because I saw the old lady's face. She, she was in her 40s. She was about my age now. And she really, really looked so unhappy. Um, and so I, I just remember that face. And it says, I don't want to do whatever she did that caused her to make her grow unhappy. And one of the things that I got, and it's almost like subliminal. It's almost like a flash through my head. Don't let yourself be constrained. Don't be afraid to jump out of the box. If you can do it, do it. If you can't, well, that's okay too. But if you can, do it. Don't be like me. Yeah. Okay, now speaking of this, uh, um, something we were talking about last night, um, about uh, evil and well, the Snow Queen and Emma. Somebody brought this up on Reddit. I wanted to talk about our version of it. Yes, they said is because Emma had a chance to get a taste of evil. Actually, it was Ingrid. Ingrid. The Ingrid was afraid when she was in Arendelle that she could lose control. Well, Emma kind of felt the same way, didn't she? Yeah, but I think Emma had another problem, which is, is that... She never got a chance to really get any kind of um, uh, hands-on practice with a, a tutor or a person who knew how to use her powers. She did get some with, with Elsa, but um, it was for her. It was kind of more like going to like third grade. In other words, now you're going to go to third grade, and now all of a sudden you're going to go right to graduate school. Um. And you, I mean, Emma is as a as a, a has is a very volatile past in the first place. So, obviously, with nobody there to help calm her down, she was afraid that she was going to be rejected. But it didn't help any that the Snow Queen herself had gone through the same thing and decided to go through and then later use it on Emma. Even Rumble Stilskin was surprised at her power, you know, how much she was able to screw over Emma. Yeah. Um, now, let's talk about you. You had a taste of evil. And you could see how it would be so easy for you to be like Darth Vader and choose the dark side. Um, and that scares you, doesn't it? It does. It does scare me because I, 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 I can see it. You know, how easy it would be for me to embrace the darkness. Um, but the thing that makes you different is because you prefer the light. Because you prefer doing good. There's nothing that the darkness can offer you. Except one thing, which you kind of already have it anyway. Power. Exactly. Power. You got power. The difference is, is that you're not an abuser. You are a very not I wouldn't say less than fair, but you're you're kind of a moderate. You're like, okay, I have power, but I'm not going to abuse that power because I understand I can lose it just as easily as I can gain it. You can lose it a lot easier than you can gain it. Because if you think about what you do, um I mean mother is always there. You know, constantly keeping a close eye on us. Because we are the first generation um, in this life, in my lifetime anyway, and for many others, um, weather stewards, to have been given the opportunity to be in control of our destiny and our weather. Yes, you had it. You had some control. I guess you could say I was Snow Queen 1.1 or 1.0 and you're Snow Queen 2.0. 
You're more advanced than me. You have already got developed more talents than me. But no matter what, what I learned, I shared with you. And then what you learned, you've been voluntarily sharing with me. Even though my reign is over, you have been there uh, working with me and helping me to understand what I did not know. Okay. And again, I think that's one of the most blessing things about Mother God. Mother God knew this. Father God does too. We haven't talked much about Father God. I want to talk a little bit about him. Okay. Father God is kind of like, more like a maintenance guy. I, I, I use this example many times because we had a maintenance guy. He was a really nice guy. He was really sweet. He passed away a couple of years ago. And one of the things about this maintenance guy was, and his name is Mike, and I happened to have been very much, I kind of like, I kind of was attracted to him. Yes, you were. And um, me and Mike were working on something together, and we were talking shop. And because I grew up fiddling around mechanical things too, and I still do, you still do, um... I happened to had a uh, chance to get to know him much better than many others did because I got to know his background to a little bit that he would tell me and I, I realized that he was a quiet man but he also was a very smart man and he really did believe with his heart of hearts to the, do the best he could, despite the odds. Mike died, by the way, on um, Christmas Eve of 2012. Nine days after Fluffy. And um, I miss both very much. Uh, really, I do. I miss him because he was a kindred heart and he was a good spirit. And he was a good man. But one of the things is, just like Mike, I mean, this guy, Yahweh, is for the most part, it's pretty quiet. He doesn't really want to get his, stick his nose all the time into the affairs of people. He just wants to quiet, keep quietly keep the universe working. I mean, he enjoys working with the matter and particles and, and everything else. But when it comes to, you know, interaction with the, with the social needs of the human beings and other ETs and people of the world, universe, he kind of just wants to stay to himself. Unless someone says they have no heat. And then, well, then he goes ahead and works on the, the situation. Um, his son Jesus of Nazareth took a lot of chances when he came here to show that, number one, his dad was not a war god like the Jews made him out to be. He wasn't some guy like Saddam Hussein or um, Hamas or ISIS. He was... He would try to explain that my dad is a loving man and he loves you. And he wants you to be happy. And he wants you to know that he wants you to know that even after all you struggle here on earth, that when you go home, you're going to have a chance to enjoy spending time in a place, as he said, flowing with milk and honey from my father's home has... My father's land has many mansions, and one of those mansions is yours. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of what that means, but here's what I want to get at. There also, unfortunately, is an alternative, because he's competing against another entity of this universe that controls this universe. Now... He, we're talking about 
not so much an individual, but rather a group of people. And we call them the dark side. The Sith, if you will. Which includes the equivalent of Darth Vader. I'm using Star Trek Paradigm, or Star Wars Paradigm, so please don't flame me. Okay? I'm, I'm trying to keep this in something level that's acumenical and at the same time sincere. Okay? Now, this group has a different idea of what they consider a good arrangement. And unfortunately, it is not the same arrangement that what Yahweh and his son Jesus, or what it be Yeshua, have in mind. What they want to, they want to do is they want all humankind to have all knowledge, of all because they have free will. Yahweh gave us free will anyway. But they want us to have all knowledge so that we too can become like gods. Now, Mother Asna, also known as Asherah, had decided along with Yahweh, okay, look, I won't want to give everybody carte blanche, but we can't keep them as stupid imbeciles either. We got to respect the fact that they do have a free will, but they have to understand that with free will comes responsibility. And so... When me and other people kind of asked, can we do something about this environment that we live in? Can we help? Could we be a part of the weather patterns? Could we do something? After many, I don't know how long it was as far as linear, linear, literal time or linear time, but it was a while. And Mother Asna and Father Yahweh said, yeah, you know, Okay, but we're going to have to watch them because, you know, they tend to, you know, human beings tend to be, um, you know, sometimes tend to get out of control. And so it was decided to set up a group of 28 people. That was the original intention was 28, okay? Seven stewards, or four stewards for seven regions, and each steward would be in charge of a season, okay? So, because you got you got s spring, summer, autumn, and winter, okay? And the seven regions of the Earth, we kind of are kind of broken down kind of like phytonet regions, okay? Kind of like, not exactly the same. For example, however, here's one that is related. Zone 1 is North America. That's my region. It's big. It also includes Canada and Mexico, too. Except I didn't want Mexico. So I give that, that's been what's broken down to given to a South American stewardess or steward. Because you also realize that the Earth else has a northern and southern hemisphere. Technically, you could have two snow queens. You could have two one for the northern and one for the southern, and it would still work. In fact, even one Stone Queen could do both if they want. If she wants to flip back and forth between two got two two hemispheres. I I don't want to travel like that. That would drive me crazy. What I'm trying to say is is that Mother has been doing this experiment now. I mean, she experimented many years ago, like when Lumi was young. Yes, and. And even though it was very small and definitely as a need to know basis, it went pretty well. It was definitely just like Michelle said, it was just an experiment, you know, a pilot program, if you will. Only very few people had any knowledge of it. Right. That's like Mother said. But then again, when Mother decided to make the program bigger, she still wanted to keep the group very small so that there would be not likeliness of if, if somebody, you know, could get out of control. So she keeps a tight rein on all of us with a loving hand. And Yahweh, you know, is just, it's just like the song Daddy's Hands. Yahweh normally doesn't want to get, you know, use a firm hand on the people. You know, you know, he doesn't like to do the equivalent to punish us. But he's kind of like, I got to make sure, along with my partner, that the people that are in control understand that this is a, a privilege and that we 
still have the final rein and final control and final say. So if we feel that it's not working, we can pull that rank. And and he does. And he does. Well, anyway, um, to make a long story short, because i got to go take care of some of the things. And this is running longer than we intended. Um, why don't we give a... Why don't we give the... The quickie. Okay. It's going to be getting cold in the next few days. Wait. And uh, I want you and Michelle and I have been talking about this. We, when we're warning you, and we're going to keep warning you, please trust warmly. And, and, and please keep in mind the concerns of the less fortunate. Right. And wish us luck with the teeth because... Even if we pull the tooth, it's only part of the project. We still have to put a bridge in or an implant in and replace the tooth that's lost. Otherwise, the, jo- the teeth are going to shift and then we're going to be all screwed up all over again. Right. And another thing, too, is I'm very proud to be here with Michelle. And we hope that this, this winter will be a wonderful winter. And that um, for many people who love the winter climate... We're hoping that you're going to enjoy this year. And, of course, the main purpose was is to focus on getting California the much-needed rain in Southern California. And it looks like what's going, what's been planned, um, it's, it was a group consensus. It wasn't just me and Michelle because um, some of the stewards agreed that it's time to do something different. Um, we're, we're working, to because of the weaker inso, to get the rain into Southern California. And then... Um, in the south of the United States, but it's going to take a lot of water, and and but that means that the northern forces, which really is not, is quite as um, I wouldn't say is less of a concern, are going to have a chance to come on down further into the continental U.S. and to provide colder weather, and that's okay. It's it's this is what's supposed to be. I mean, it's, you guys can deal with it. I know it sucks, but it's not really. It could be a lot worse. Right, and also we also have the concern of worrying about what Yellowstone and other volcanoes because they also are increasing the volcanic activity as is, is seismic activity. Exactly. So think of this as preparing for the day that Yellowstone pops its cork because once that happens, it's going to be freezing, it's going to be cold, it's going to be dark, it's going to be rain, it's going to be dank, it's not going to be nice. Right now, it's right where we are in Connecticut. It, the sky is blue and it's it's sunny and it looks good, right? So um, that also means that you need you should take advantage of this time to prepare for the the great changes ahead of us. And what anything else? Yeah, um, to. I, I I I really wish that as our videos could go across dimensions, and so I could leave a message to the other Michelle. What's that? Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. I know we didn't talk much in church, but that was many years ago. But I didn't forget. You saved my life. Without meaning to, you saved my life. Um, thanks to your visit all those years ago, I got a chance to go much further. And maybe someday soon, I'll return the favor and uh, go see another Michelle of another dimension and tell her the same thing that you told me without saying a word. I knew it was me because great minds think alike. And we, you, I could see you were, you were almost identical twins. So, we, except for the hair color. Except for the hair color, which you didn't take that chance to be free. And that's why you were so sad. And that's one of the reasons I decided to be free and, and to go further. It's because I could see what you really were trying to tell me. But for the rest of you guys, you want to say it together? Sure. Don't forget to like and share. And we will talk to you soon. Always. Always.
And don't forget, you want to leave us comments, suggestions, concerns. Comments, concerns right down there. You want to send us private email? You can send it to bichela3 at gmail.com or me at l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-e at gmail.com. Donations can be sent to g-o-f-u-n-d-m-e dot com forward slash b-i-c-h-e-l-a or www.p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash b-i-c-h-e-l-a. Want to send it via PayPal? Easy enough. You can send it to b-i-c-h-e-l-a-3 at gmail.com or b-i-c-h-e-l-a-3 at yahoo.com. And we would definitely use that money for the purpose as intended. For example, for please say in the letter if you decide to donate to buy a PayPal, what the money's for, most of you for. If it's for the studio, let us know. If it's for the teeth, let us know. If you send get involved with each individual crowdfunding project, you owe it to a note too. Exactly. Okay, guys, that's it for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.